Occupy Wall Street may have started small, but now it spans the globe. ABC has details. Protests in Ohio, North Carolina, Virginia, Massachusetts, and Oregon. And the message being translated around the globe. In Tokyo, protesters are fighting inequality. Filipino demonstrators cried, U.S. troops out now. And about 300 Australians chanted the cry that started on Wall Street. We are the 99 percent. Anger at what protests call corporate greed and political complacency is the common thread. But other grievances vary from place to place. The Telegraph talks to one protester in Japan. And in London, demonstrators are protesting bank bailouts and corporate greed, CNBC reports. A crowd of a few thousand protesters noisily gathered outside St. Paul's Cathedral in London on Saturday, less than 100 meters away from the London Stock Exchange. Protesters carried placards reading, if voting could change anything, it would be illegal. And bankers got a bailout, we got sold out. A writer for the Washington Post says the fact these protests aren't going away and are actually spreading could be a troubling sign. What worries me is the echo of the 1930s, a similar period of economic change and dislocation. When the traditional business and political leaders seemed to have failed during the downturn of the 30s, populist indignation veered sharply right and left toward dangerous movements that express national indignation at the point of a gun. According to the Occupy Wall Street website, demonstrations will continue until they achieve their goals. United in one voice, it is up to us, the people, to decide our future. We are not goods in the hands of politicians and bankers who do not represent us. On October 15th, we will meet on the streets to initiate the global change we want. We will peacefully demonstrate, talk, and organize until we make it happen. It's time for us to unite. It's time for them to listen. For News Yamblik Hansen, multiple sources, the real story.